Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor, yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're all doing fantastic. So, today on the podcast, why are passengers on commercial airlines not being equipped with parachutes? Now, this is a question that I am not getting very often from you guys who are already subscribing to the channel, but I do get it quite often when I talk to people outside of the airline industry. For example, when I am positioning to and from the bases that I will be flying to. So, uh, I'm going to divide this into a couple of sections, guys. Um, we can start with the absolutely most obvious reasons that we do not hand out parachutes to passengers. In order for you to do a, pers- a successful parachuting jump, you need to have quite extensive training. Okay? If I were to take a normal passenger and just haul them out of the aircraft with a parachute, it is unlikely that they would come down to the surface of the earth unhurt. Okay? It's more likely that a big percentage of the people would never be able to even get the parachute extended. And of those who actually get the parachute extended, most of them would probably end up in a lake or in a tree or in somewhere where they shouldn't be landing and hurt themselves very badly. So that's the first reason. Okay? You need to be trained to do a parachuting jump. Now, second, we come to the, um, the fact that commercial airliners are not designed as parachuting aircraft. They're designed to get you very quickly from A to B. The way that we do that is that we fly at a very high altitude. We normally fly between 35,000 feet to 40, 41,000 feet. That's about 12,000 meters up in the atmosphere. At that height, the pressure and the oxygen content of the air is significantly lower than what it is on the surface. Basically, uh, if you were to be subjected to the kind of pressure and oxygen content that you have up there, you would have what we call useful consciousness of between 15 to 30 seconds. So that means that you would be conscious for that amount of time. After that, you would be unconscious, unable to do anything. So if you put that together with the fact that the outside temperature at those altitudes tends to be between minus 50 to minus 60 degrees centigrade and that because we want the aircraft to get quickly from A to B it's traveling with a speed an indicated airspeed of about 250 knots now 250 knots that's about 350 almost 400 kilometers per hour so if you were if you were to imagine sticking your head out of a car that's doing about 300 350 kilometers per hour, you can imagine the kind of punch that the air would give you. Now imagine that that punch is also minus 60 degrees centigrade. You can see why jumping out at those speeds would probably not be a very good idea. So what would most likely happen if it was possible, and it's not, to jump out of an aircraft at that altitude would be that you would become instantly unconscious and very, very few people would even be able to extend the parachute before they became unconscious. Right. So that's number two. Number three, commercial airlines are designed to not be able to open the doors at when they're in flight. Um, The way that we do that is, as I was saying before, we pressurize the air inside of the cabin. We do that so that you guys can eat peanuts and have drinks and talk to your spouse and play video games without having an oxygen mask on your face or a spacesuit. Okay. So what we do is we take air from the engines and we pressurize the cabin air inside. Uh, That means that the difference in pressure between the outside air and the inside air of the cabin is very big. Now, next time you fly, if you look at how the doors of the aircraft are being constructed, you see that as they're being closed, they are being pulled inwards and then closed like a wedge towards the um, the aircraft or the door sides. The way it works is that once we start pressurizing the aircraft, the pressure inside of the cabin and the difference in pressure actually keeps the doors closed. This means that there are actually no locks on the main doors of the aircraft. No matter how much you would try to open those doors, how much you would pull, the difference of air pressure is a bit, it's approximately between seven or eight pounds per square inch. It is impossible to pull one of those doors open. The 
only way that you can open a door inside of an aircraft when you're airborne is if we depressurize the aircraft. And as I said before, if we depressurize the aircraft, we have the problem of oxygen content and um, pressure which means that your lungs will not be able to absorb what little oxygen is there and you'll become unconscious very quickly. So now you have three fairly compelling reasons. A, you are not able to jump. B, if you did jump, you would probably not be conscious for more than a couple of seconds outside of the aircraft. And C, you cannot open the doors. Okay. If you add to that the fact that um, an aircraft is designed to be able to evacuate all its passengers in 90 seconds using all doors. Okay, You would not be able to use all doors if you were to try to evacuate the aircraft um, by parachuting off it. You couldn't use the front doors because the likelihood is that you would be sucked into the engines. The overwing exit is similar. Uh, you would maybe get out on the wing but you would probably kill yourself if you get out onto the wing or you would hit the the very hot air that's being exposed by the engines just below the, um, the exit. So you're left with the back doors uh, only. So even if they could be open and they can't, then um, it would take about three times as long. And any, here's probably the first and most important reasons why we don't do this. I can't come up with a single malfunction that could happen to an aircraft where it would be more safe to leave the aircraft than to let the pilots get the aircraft down on the ground. Okay. The only thing that I could think of where it would be possibly helpful would be if the aircraft for some, uh, whatever reason would have some kind of structural failure. But the likelihood that, there would be, uh, that we would be able to, ac to actually uh, evacuate the aircraft in a controlled manner if we would have a structural failure of the aircraft is very low. So in almost all, or if I, I would say all circumstances, it would always be safer to remain in your seats, listen to what the cabin crew tells you and let the pilots take care of getting the aircraft safely down on the ground. That's what they're trained to do. That's what the aircraft is built to do. Uh, and this is the reason why we don't give passengers parachutes. Okay. I hope that makes sense to you guys. There are many, many more reasons than this, which I'm sure that you guys can probably add to the comment section below. But these are kind of the main reasons. Guys, if you liked it, uh, as always, hit the subscribe button below and uh, I will come up with more of these uh, videos. I will explain more about the secrets of the aviation industry as well as more technical videos if you're interested in becoming a pilot. So once again, hit the subscribe button, tell your friends about this, share it on social media and I hope that you're all having a fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.